everyone. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Casey and I post a new video every single week on a lesser known missing person case that maybe hasn't been talked about in a while and needs more attention. As always, I mean absolutely no harm in doing these videos. I am simply trying to spread awareness and get these cases some more exposure. I found out about today's case as I was browsing one of the missing persons groups on Facebook, which I do multiple times a week, and I came across a flyer for a man named Brandon Lee Helms who has been missing since December of 2015 from Lakeland, Georgia. I did some online searches to find out more. I was able to contact his mother and here we are. Now there isn't a ton of information to give on this case, but we are going to do our best to get Brandon's story out there because he deserves to be found and his parents, siblings, and his two little daughters and everyone that loves him deserves to know what happened. The Lanier County Sheriff's Office is asking for your help finding a missing man. Brandon Lee Helms was reported missing earlier this month from the Teeterville Highway area in Lakeland, Georgia. The 42-year-old has brown hair and blue eyes and is six feet tall. Deputies are asking anyone who may have seen him to contact the Lanier County Sheriff's Office. Brandon Lee Helms was born on March 14th of 1973 to parents Gail and Harry Helms. He grew up in Cordell, Georgia with his two siblings and in 2003 he married his wife Misty and they had two little girls whom they were raising in Thomasville. Brandon had worked for multiple printing companies including Cordell Dispatch and the Valdosta Daily Times and in 2015 he was currently working for Home Depot. In mid-2015 Brandon and Misty had separated and Brandon had moved out of the family home and was staying with his longtime friend Monty Kilcrease on Teeterville Road in Lakeland, Georgia which is in Lanier County and about an hour away from Thomasville where he had previously lived. He had been staying with Monty for a few months, and on Saturday, December the 13th, Brandon had picked up his two daughters from their mother and had taken them to a Christmas company picnic Home Depot was hosting. Brandon spoke to his mom that evening after he and the girls returned, and he told her that they had had a great time at the picnic. Brandon didn't give any indications that anything was wrong, and everything seemed fine. He took his girls back to their mother in Thomasville the next day, which was Sunday, and we assume that Brandon made it back to Monty's house, but that Sunday, December 14th, was the last time anyone saw Brandon. I am unsure who was the last person to see him. I'm unsure if it was Monty, his roommate, or his wife, Misty, as he was dropping his daughters off. On Monday morning, Brandon's wife, Misty, called her mother-in-law, Gail, around 11.15 a.m. and asked if she had heard from Brandon that day. Brandon's mom hadn't, and Misty informed her that they were having trouble getting in touch with him. He wasn't answering his phone. So Brandon's parents headed to Monty's home in Lakeland, where Brandon had been staying, to look for him. And Monty, I guess, was either already there or on his way to the home to look. Brandon's truck was in the driveway of Monty's home. His cigarettes and his cell phone were inside the house. The only things missing were his wallet, the keys to his truck, and Brandon. Monty called the Lanier County Sheriff's Department and reported Brandon as missing while Brandon's parents were still on their way. Police got on it, though. In fact, when Brandon's parents reached the home, law enforcement was already there and they had the tracking dogs out. The dogs sniffed around about a half mile down the road from the house, but they didn't hit on Brandon's scent, which led them to believe Brandon had not left on foot. Another reason it is not believed he would have taken off walking is his truck had a half a tank of gas in it. That day was very rainy and cool and Brandon was cold natured. If he needed to get somewhere on his own, he likely wouldn't have chosen to walk in the cold and the rain when his truck was there readily available with fuel in it. Now, I too am extremely cold natured, and if it's even slightly chilly outside and wet, I'm freezing. I think I'm freezing to death. So, if I need to go somewhere, I'm going to hibbity hop on out to my car and drive. I ain't walking anywhere. I'm just saying. I personally don't think Brandon decided it was a particularly 
good day to take a stroll. On December 16th, the Lanier County Sheriff's Office issued a be on the lookout for Brandon, stating that he was not wanted for a crime, but family members as well as law enforcement were concerned for his safety and had been unable to contact him. There was still no word from Brandon, and no one came forward saying they had seen him or been in contact with him. Even though extensive searches of the immediate area where he was staying were conducted, there was no sign of him found anywhere. They also searched the South Georgia and North Florida areas to no avail. Polygraphs were given to at least two people close to Brandon, but the results of those polygraphs have not been released. Now, from what I understand, Misty, Brandon's wife, whom he was separated from at the time he went missing, went to court in Thomas County in 2016, a year after Brandon disappeared, attempting to have Brandon declared dead. The declaration did not go through, though. Georgia law is you have to wait four years after someone goes missing before having someone declared deceased. It has now been almost six years, and I'm unsure if she ever did have him declared deceased or not. I couldn't find any records stating so if she did. In 2016, Brandon's family teamed up with Faithfully Found, which is a national nonprofit that works with families, law enforcement, and they use social media to educate communities and help bring the missing home. A candlelight vigil was organized and new posters were put out in hopes Brandon's face would be seen by anyone who might have any information. I will link the Faithfully Found Facebook page in the description box below if you would like to check them out. I think they are doing a wonderful thing. Brandon is described as being a sweet, loving person who was a great daddy to his two little girls, and he loved them and his entire family so much. One of the last things Brandon said to his own dad shortly before he disappeared is that he would never ever leave his children, that they were his whole life. That doesn't sound to me like someone who had plans to disappear and leave their family behind intentionally. The Lanier County Sheriff's Office has an ongoing missing person case for Brandon, but there have been five different investigators on Brandon's case in the past five and a half years, and there have still been no answers, not one lead or clue since that day that Brandon vanished. Brandon is 5 feet 11 inches tall and 145 pounds. He has brown hair with a receding hairline and blue eyes. His right foot turns out when he walks due to an unrepaired knee problem. He may have short fingernails and may have scars today on his hand finger area due to a fall when he was a child. He also has a big Adam's apple. Brandon often wore sunglasses, he wore tennis shoes on a regular basis, and long calf-link socks, and also a plain gold wedding band engraved with Brandon and Misty and the date 6-14-2003. None of these items, nor his truck keys or wallet, have ever been recovered. If you have any information or tips to help find Brandon Helms, please call the Lanier County Sheriff's Office at 229-482-3545. You can also call the anonymous tip line of the We Can Bring You Hope organization at 724-466-4673. Or you can leave a tip on their website at www.wecanbringyouhope.org. I will have the link for that in the description box and it is anonymous. Please share Brandon's flyer. As always, it will be linked below. Please keep his family in your prayers and please share this video if you think it will help. That is all the information I have for today. And now I want to know what you all think happened to Brandon. Let me know in the comments, but please be respectful. His family members will see this video and they've been through enough. They do not need to see any negative comments. Now, in my opinion, because you know I always give it if you've watched my videos before, I don't believe he took off on foot. Tracking dogs would have likely picked up on his scent if they were sniffing around that fast, that soon, after he was last seen. I feel like it's possible he was picked up, but if that's the case, who did he go with? Wherever he went, 
I don't think he planned to be gone long, hence the reason he didn't take his cigarettes, his phone. He didn't pack a bag or take any clothes. I don't think Brandon willingly left his children and his whole life behind. It's also feasible that someone caused Brandon to go away. There's no evidence of foul play, but there's also no proof that foul play wasn't involved. And Brandon is still gone. He is still missing. People don't just disappear. They don't just vanish into thin air. Lakeland is a small town. Someone out there knows something. Perhaps even someone watching this video. So, will you be the one who looks away or the one who does something about it? Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss when I upload each week. I would also highly suggest checking out my entire missing playlist as each case I cover is so important and deserves more attention. Thanks again to each and every one of you. I will see you next week. Mm -hmm.